Hi guys, in this video, we are going to start a new advanced data structure that is Fibonacci heaps. So in this playlist of advanced data structures, until now, I have taught you binomial heaps and leftist heaps, right? So now this is going to be the third advanced data structure that is also a heap. Many people consider this as a very complex data structure. But in my opinion, this is the least complex data structure. By the end of this video, you will be convinced by my statement that this is the least complex data structure. So what am I going to cover in this video? First of all, let us learn the what. That means, what is exactly Fibonacci heap? We will learn it through all these uh, properties that a Fibonacci heap has to follow. Then we will learn that why we call Fibonacci heap as Fibonacci heap. Couldn't the big brains of the tech world think of some other word for Fibonacci heaps? So there's a reason behind it. Why? We call it a Fibonacci heap. Then we will learn the second why. And that why is, why do we need to learn this advanced data structure? Or how is it more efficient than binomial heap and the other uh, uh, advanced data structures that we have learned until now? Final thing that we will learn is that why we need to learn this advanced data structure, right? Let us start with the topic. So what is a Fibonacci heap? So basically Fibonacci heap is a collection of trees. It is not a collection of binomial trees. It is just a collection of trees. Like you can consider this as a tree, this as a tree, and this entire thing as a tree, this as a tree, and this entire thing as a tree, right? So there are one, two, three, four, and five trees over here. And then these trees follow the heap ordering property or the min heap ordering property to be more specific. All the trees over here are separately following the min heap ordering property, right? So basically, Fibonacci heap is a collection of trees with each following the heap ordering property. Now, trees may be in any order in the root list. So when we were learning binomial heaps, we learned that the trees are actually ordered in this way, B0, B2, B4, B6, right? They are ordered in this way, B3, correct? So uh, all the trees were actually ordered in ascending order. We cannot have a B5 over here right before b0 so they are arranged in ascending order but so i'll provide you the link uh, for my binomial heaps video in the side button but this is not the case when we talk about fibonacci heaps right because here you can see here we have got a node uh, here we can't call it b0 right why because i told you that it is not necessary for these trees to be binomial trees Suppose you, if you uh, talk about this tree, this tree is not a binomial tree. Why? Uh, suppose you call it B3 because the root has three children. One, two, three, three children. So in that case, a B3 is made up of two B2s, right? I told that in when I taught binomial trees. But here you can see this is a B2, but we cannot call this a B2, the leftmost child of this a B2, right? So basically we cannot call this B0. So you can call them as a uh, tree with degree zero, right this is again a tree with degree 0 and this is a tree with degree 3 why because the root of this tree has three children right and this is a tree with degree 1 because the root has only one child only one child that is 33 so degree 1 this is the one with degree 2 so as you can see over here there is no ascending order of degrees, right? It is not necessary that the trees are actually ordered in this way. First degree 0, then degree 1, then degree 2. Here, zero, here 3 is coming after 0 and then 2 is coming after that, right? So it is not following any kind of ascending order. Moreover, in binomial trees, we also learned that uh, we cannot have two B0s at the same time or we cannot have two B4s at the same time, right? Or we cannot have trees with the same order at the same time. Here you will see that there are two trees with degree 0. So there can be two trees with any de degree. So there can be multiple trees of the same degree, right? Like there can be uh, more than one tree of the degree 2, more than one tree of all the degrees. So we can actually conclude that the Fibonacci heap has a more relaxed structure. Whereas in case of binomial heaps, the structure was very much rigid because of these two properties that the trees should be arranged in ascending order and there should not be more than one tree of the same order in a binomial heap. So this is this Fibonacci heap is actually having a more relaxed structure, right? 
Apart from that, a pointer to the minimum element of the heap is always maintained. In binomial heap, when we wanted to find out the minimum element of the entire heap, so what we needed to do? We needed to traverse this entire root list, right? You must be knowing this is actually known as the root list, the list of all the roots uh, in this heap, right? So we needed to traverse the entire root list and find out which is the minimum element, right? But in case of Fibonacci heap, we have actually got a pointer at the minimum element of the entire heap. We have uh, we are always maintaining a pointer, right? Wh which we represent as minimum of h, right? So we always maintain this pointer. So it is very easy to find the minimum element. In fact, you can find out find it out in constant amount of time. So suppose if this element 6 gets deleted, then this pointer will point out at the new minimum element, which will be 11, right? So we will keep on updating this pointer so that we can always find the minimum element in big O of one time, right? So this is something new in case of Fibonacci heaps as compared to binomial heaps. So now another interesting thing in Fibonacci heaps is that the siblings in a Fibonacci heap are connected through a circular doubly linked list, okay? So as you can see, these are the siblings and they are connected through a doubly, uh, the linked list is in both directions and it uh, the linked list is also circular, right? Like there is not null over here, but it, it is, uh, but the last node is pointing towards the first node and the first node is again pointing towards the last node. Over here also you can see that uh, they are connected through a doubly uh, circular linked list. Even over here, uh, this will not be null. In fact, this will be pointing over here, whereas this will be pointing over here, right? So they are connected through a doubly circular linked list, all the nodes. And suppose uh, these nodes, they have no siblings. So, uh, so even over here, you can, uh, so suppose these nodes or the leaf nodes, they have no siblings. For them, the next pointer is actually pointing at themselves and the previous pointer is also pointing at themselves. So the same thing you can draw for this node as well, right? The next pointer is pointing at itself and the previous pointer is also pointing at itself, right? Okay, so we are done with this. So in a Fibonacci heap, each child points to its parents, right? So even in binomial heaps, we saw that each child is pointing to its parent, right? So even in case of Fibonacci heap, you can see this 24 is pointing to its parent 6, 55 is also pointing to its parent 6, whereas 41 is also pointing to its parent 6. Here 33 is pointing to its parent 20, right? Apart from that, each parent points to any one child, right? So here you can see that uh, 6 is pointing to only one child 55, right? It is not pointing to all the childs. Here 28 is not pointing to 39, it is pointing to only one child, which is 51, right? Whereas in binomial heaps, we saw that the parent is actually pointing to only the leftmost child. But here it need not be that way, that the, uh, the parent can point to actually any one of the child, right? So we are also done with these two things. What is degree of a node? So this is basically not root, this is nodes. Okay, so degree is actually number of children of nodes of a tree, right? That means if you want to see uh, a particular node, like we talk about degree of this node, so the degree of this node is 1 because it has 1 child. Uh, so the degree of 28 is 2 because it has 2 children. Degree of 6 is 3 because it has 3 children. Your degree of 11 is 0 because it has 0 child, right? Degree of 27, 0 because 0 child. Right? Now what is mark of x or the mark of any node? So mark of x is actually another field in the structure of any node, right? So this is actually the structure of a node in case of Fibonacci heap. You have got a pointer to the parent. Every child points to its parent, right? And then there is the data value for 58, it will be 58. And then there is a degree value that means the number of children of that particular node. Then we will have a pointer to the left sibling and the right sibling because we are talking about a circular linked list in case of siblings. Then there will be a mark value. Uh, then there, uh, there will also be pointer to a particular child. It can be any child, right, of this node. What is the mark value? So mark value is actually a Boolean value. Uh, if suppose the value of mark of 24. I've got here 24, if the mark value of, of 24 is 1, that means that 24 has actually lost one of its child. What that means is that 24 earlier had one more child over here, uh, because of some reason we deleted that child. So that is what it means when mark of 24 is equal to 1.
by default, the mark value of all the nodes is zero. So initially, all the nodes are unmarked, right? So as you can see, one means it has lost one of its child and zero means it has lost no child. We are learning this mark value because it will be required in order to learn how to perform different operations on Fibonacci heaps from the next video, right? So this is a Fibonacci heap, a data structure that follows all these properties I've listed over here, right? Now let us answer the question that why Fibonacci heaps are actually called as Fibonacci heaps. So in case of Fibonacci heaps, each tree in the Fibonacci heap of order n has at least f n plus 2 nodes in it, okay? So uh, as this is a tree of order 2, why? Because its root has two children, right? Uh, 28 has two children, 39 and 51. So order of this tree is 2. So the, uh, this statement says that this tree of order 2 will have f n, what is n over here? Uh, order of the tree, so the order is 2, so 2 plus 2, f4 nodes in it, at least, right? At least f4 nodes will be there in this, in this tree, right? Now you might be wondering that what is this f n plus 2? So this refers to the n plus second Fibonacci number right so this property holds so this property holds for each and every tree in a fibonacci heap now i guess you understand that why fibonacci heaps are actually called as fibonacci heaps right so uh, we can check this property for this tree itself if we write down the fibonacci numbers so these are the fibonacci numbers and according to this property this tree should have at least f4 nodes right now what is F4? This is my Fibona first Fibonacci number, F2, F3, F4 Fibonacci number. So F4 over here is actually equal to 2. Does this tree have at least 2 nodes? Yes, it has 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes and 4 is greater than or equal to 2. So we have seen that this property holds and this property holds for each of the trees in a Fibonacci heap. So now let us come to the last question that why should we learn Fibonacci heaps? What advantage does it have over other advanced data structures? Let us look at that. So here I've depicted the biggest advantage of Fibonacci heaps over binary heap and binomial heap. We were very excited earlier that, uh, that we reduced the time complexity of the merge operation. Uh, in case of a binary heap, it was order of n. So we reduced it to order of log n, right? But guess what? It can be reduced further when we use Fibonacci heaps. So the merge case time complexity can be reduced further to order of 1. And when the merge case time complexity reduces to order of 1, so what happens after that is the insert operation will also take order of 1. So here I have written order of 1 because all these, all these are actually amortized time complexities. So all these are actually amortized time complexities. So we learned that the insert operation in binomial heap takes order of log n time, but here I've written order of one because it is actually amortized time complexity, right? This is amortized time complexity. So uh, same in case of find minimum, I have written amortized time complexity. That is why I've written it as order of one, right? So here you can see that even the decrease key operation that used to take order of log n time in binomial heaps, it will take order of one time in Fibonacci heap. Now you can look at the time complexities over here. All are order of one except the delete minimum operation that takes order of log n time. So that is the only reason why I was calling Fibonacci heap as the least complex advanced data structure that we have learned until now. Just look at the time complexities. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will learn how to perform some of these operations in Fibonacci heaps. 